Guys, we're talking uh, to Amy Berger, and basically, uh, she's touching on amyloid placking. Um, there's a couple points about that. Sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. It's not the common thread. It's not the thing. There's a lot of misunderstoods about it. There's more data that needs to be coming, but uh, that's actually fascinating. And then um, just to kind of summarize a couple things, um, the unique thing about Alzheimer's is there's, there's, it, there's a sugar uh, problem. Uh, there's a lack of sugar, <laughs> and uh, it can be picked up on a PET scan of like an absence of sugar. So it's obvious somehow it's a, um, the cells, mitochondria cannot get sugar and they're basically starving, right? Yeah, that's in a, in a basic overview, that's the problem in the brain. And when they starve, then they lose the connections, right? You got these communication connections and synapses and they just kind of, you know, lose their communication lines. Oh, exactly. I mean, if people, if people, aren't familiar with the shape of a neuron. I mean, very basically, like, let's say it looks like this. It's got the cell body, the main part, and it's got all these little projections. And the projections are how these cells communicate with each other. The messages are passed out of one and it's received at, at the ends of another. And because of this energy shortage, this fuel crisis in the brain, it takes energy just to maintain the shape of this cell, just to maintain the structure requires energy. So when the brain is starting to lose the ability to, to have enough energy, in order to keep the main part of the cell alive, the cell body, these neurons actually retract these projections are called axons and dendrites. The cell will actually retract these into the cell body in order just to keep the cell alive. Wow. So what I, I liken it to a vacuum with the retractable cord. It's like you just suck that cord back in for storage. But now all of these synapses, all of these places where these cells are supposed to communicate are gone. So those cells are no longer communicating with each other. It makes perfect sense that that person is going to have memory loss and behavior changes and personality disturbances. Um, but, but the beautiful thing is, even earlier, earlier on in my own research, I would say that these cells were starving to death, right? They were dying. They're actually not dying. The, the fascinating, promising thing in Alzheimer's research is like, again, when we give these people ketones, whether it's through a ketogenic diet or these new exogenous ketone substances, they have improved cognition. Now, if those cells were completely dead, they wouldn't get better. No one would ever have any improvement because if those cells were dead, it, it wouldn't matter if they could take up ketones or not because they're dead. But the fact that when we get these cells, this great, fabulous alternative fuel, they sort of come back to life. They come back online. Like, Interesting. The, it, it goes to show that those cells weren't dead. They were almost like hibernating. They were in a low power mode waiting to get enough fuel to come back and do what they have to do. So, so but I, I'm imagining um, there's not a lot of research just because who's going to fund this because um, there's no money in it, right? I mean... Yeah, there's, there's not a lot of research, but there is some, and it's really, really promising. A lot of it is being done in Canada by a, a doctor named Stephen Cunane and his colleagues. It's fascinating. And thank goodness, it's not just in rats and it's not just in mice and Petri dishes, but in human subjects with Alzheimer's and with the precursor, which is called mild cognitive impairment. Um, now, people that, that are very elderly or have very severe Alzheimer's do not show as good an improvement as someone who's in a milder state, but there is still a noticeable improvement. Wow. Yeah. Um, now, what about intermittent fasting? Because that creates neurogenesis. Now, what's, what's your take on that? I think fasting can be a very helpful tool. I don't think everyone needs to do it. And um, especially, specifically in the Alzheimer's world, some of these people are, are already going to be underweight and frail, and I don't recommend fasting for them. They should not be fasting. They should not be calor you know, calorie restricting. But for someone who's younger, like we said, maybe 50s and 60s with this early onset Alzheimer's, especially if they have other signs of metabolic disease, if they you know, have metabolic syndrome type issues, um, I think fasting can be great because anything – that reduces insulin levels, reduces blood glucose, um, forces, you know, not forces, but helps the body transition more into that fat using state, I think should be helpful for any metabolic disorder, including Alzheimer's. I mean, even the, the, the topic of autophagy, you know, you're going to recycle these damaged proteins, uh, the folded proteins, all the different uh, 
defects. I mean, I could imagine that that's probably going to help, but I can see your point. If someone's frail and they're, uh, you'd have to have it really supervised and really watch it closely. Um, fascinating. Now, just guys, if you haven't got this yet, she, um, I wanted to emphasize one point. You don't just wake up with Alzheimer's overnight. It's a gradual thing. You could even have, you could start to get this in your 30s, I guess 30s or 40s, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and how many people go in a room and they're like, okay, what did I come in here for? They start to have a little bit of that. I mean, they, oh, where did I put my keys? Um, memory uh, issues. So, I mean, it's kind of the start of that. It's uh, So if you take care of yourself now, um, you could actually be in better shape. Because once you get it, it's so hard to backtrack. You know, um, I, I went to this, the home where my um, mother-in-law had put her. And I'm looking around, there's this, this place that they just take care of Alzheimer's patients only. And I'm like, oh my gosh, if you could only just have, you know, let me just feed these people because they're feeding them every hour and a half. They're putting in their snacks and they have to keep feeding them and feeding them like massive insulin. So, and it's just sad because I think probably the worst thing to happen to anyone is to lose your mind, stuck in your body, lose your mind, go from someone that's brilliant to someone that's completely, you know, not even there. That's like the worst. Um, I'd rather be hit by a bus myself, but. I mean, Alzheimer's disease is one of the most feared, dreaded illnesses because at least <clears throat> unlike so many other conditions, there's literally nothing. There's nothing available to you therapeutically. There's all of the drugs that are available for Alzheimer's are useless. They do nothing. It's like, here, take this pill, good luck. I mean, it's very sad, but that's the truth. There's nothing for them. Um, and it's, it, you know, at least as far as we know, there's nothing you can do. You get it, you're going to decline, 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 and die. But, you know, hopefully, if, if people come to the summit or even just watch this video, I certainly believe there's so much we can do about this. We are, like, I, I, I am very clear to say there is a lot that's not fully understood yet, but that doesn't mean we don't know anything. That doesn't mean we don't have enough information to start taking action. You know, why... We pretend like we're totally clueless about this, this illness. Why is it that over the last 50 or 60 years, we've had explosive increases in things like obesity, type two diabetes, cardiovascular disease, even infertility, uh, PCOS, all these things. Um, and yet when it comes to Alzheimer's disease, we just want to pretend like, oh, this couldn't possibly be a diet and lifestyle disease. When it comes to all those other conditions, even in the conventional medical world, nobody questions that there's a role for diet and lifestyle in that, if not the primary driving role. Nobody even pretends like that's not it anymore. Like, oh, oh, it doesn't matter what you eat if you're diabetic. It doesn't matter what you, your diet doesn't cause heart disease. Right. But when it comes to Alzheimer's, we just dismiss even the mere possibility that this could also be every bit a metabolic dietary lifestyle illness. Absolutely. And I, I, I see it in my practice over and over and over again. Of course, it's not an official study, but I've observed, I know there's a huge connection. I know there's something to it. Um, now, guys, at the summit, um, Amy's going to talk about something that's uh, pretty exciting, uh, and it relates to having, here you are having normal blood sugars, right? Thinking you're fine, but you're not fine. <laughs> There's some things that you guys need to know about that, that relate to not just your brain, but even men's health and a lot of other conditions. So she's going to talk about that. She's going to cover this topic in depth. Um, if you don't already have her book, Alzheimer's Antidote. It's awesome, awesome. You need to get it. It's on. It's actually on a Kindle. I don't know if it's a hardback, but it's Kindle for sure, right? Yeah, there's a Kindle version. There is also a paperback that they can get from Amazon. There's no, there's no okay. audio book yet. I've had some requests. We just haven't had a chance to do that yet. Yeah, that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> I know. People are like, well, when are you going to do that? Uh, I'll, in my spare time. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I just want to say thanks, uh, Amy, for taking the time um, for doing this. I think it's going to help a lot of people. And you guys, uh, you'll be able to see her at the event. I put a link down below for, uh, to get more information. All right. Well, thanks so much, Amy. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Take care. Okay, good.